Today's lesson is 6-8, solving equations by factoring. Our goal is to factor polynomials in order to solve equations. So we are finally solving equations now. You're seeing the purpose of factoring in this lesson. Um, to solve equations by factoring is the easiest method of solving um, quadratic equations. Um, we will learn a couple more methods to add to this throughout the year, um, but this is by far the easiest of them. Um, in order to use factoring to solve for zero, we need to use the zero product property. And what this says is if two numbers multiply to equal zero, then one of those two numbers equals zero, right? If a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. Um, in terms of variables for this, that means when we solve a problem, our answers are multiple options that will get us to zero. Um, so starting off with x minus 3 times x plus 4 equals 0, this is already in AB equals 0 form. This is a multiplying factor here. They're multiplying. So we're going to set each piece individually equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. And then we're solving. To solve, we're adding 3 to each side. Plus 3, plus 3, and we're going to get x equals 3. We're also going to get minus 4 from each side on this part, and we're going to get x equals negative 4. So our two answers are going to be 3 and negative 4. Those are two options that work. If you plugged it back in, 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Um, so negative 7 times 0 is 0. So that's how both of them will work. You can plug it back in to see if it works. Um, next up is 6b times the quantity b plus 5 times the quantity b plus 2 equals 0. So we have three separate pieces multiplying together equals 0. And so we set each piece equal to 0. 6b equals 0, so b must equal 0. Divide by 6, divide by 6, 0 divided by 6 is still 0. b plus 5 equals 0. We're going to subtract 5 from each side, and b equals negative 5 is another answer. And lastly, b plus 2 equals 0. Subtracting 2 from both sides, we get b equals negative 2. So our answer, grouping it all together so it's easy to find all three solutions, is b equals 0, negative 5, and 2. Make sure you do that on your homework and quizzes. Don't leave answers all over the place. Try to keep them grouped up or maybe even circle them. Next up, solving x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. This is not ready to be setting each piece equal to 0 because they're adding. We need it to be multiplying. So in order to get it to multiplying, we're going to be factoring what we've been doing this whole chapter. So to multiply, we take the 1 in front of the x squared times 12 to get the top number of our diamond problem. And then the bottom number comes straight from how many x we have right here, plus 7x is right there. And so the numbers that work that multiply to equal 12 add equal 7 are 4 and 3. From there, because we only have 1x squared here, again it's kind of a dotted 1 because you don't write 1 everywhere it appears, um, because of that we can actually move this plus 4 and the plus 3 straight into our factoring, meaning we have x plus 4 times x plus 3. That was a shortcut I taught the other day. So now we're ready to set each piece equal to 0. x plus 4 equals 0. We'll subtract 4 from each side. We get x equals negative 4. And we set x plus 3 equal to 0. Subtract 3 from each side. And x equals negative 3. So our answers are negative 4 and negative 3. And one last reminder is that you can plug negative 4 and negative 3, just one at a time, into the equation to see if it works. Negative 4 squared plus 7 times negative 4 plus 12. We get 16, negative times a negative is positive, minus 28, 4 times 7 is 28, and then we've got the negative sign, plus 12. So if we add the positives together first, they equal 28. 28 minus 28 is 0, so that one works. Same thing rings true for negative 3. We get 9, again, negative times a negative is positive, minus 21 plus 12. Okay, 9 plus 12 is 21. 21 minus 21 equals 0. And that's how both of them work. That is an easy way you can check your answers if you're getting um, very odd looking answers or if you're not so confident in your factoring. The next one, we've got a binomial here. We 
got 6v squared minus 24v. We cannot factor because 6 times 0 is 0, and we have a very odd-looking chart. So in this case, what we're going to do is we say what is the biggest number in both pieces that we can take out, right? If we um, look for a GCF in these pieces, it'll turn it into a multiplication. So I notice that they both have a 6 and a V in these pieces. And when we take 6V out of 6V squared, we have V left over. Divide 24 by 6, we get 4. Take Divide by V, and the Vs cancel. So we're left with 6V times V minus 4. Um, so set each piece equal to 0. 6V equals 0. V minus 4 equals 0. We'll get V equals 0, and we'll get plus 4 to both sides. V equals 4. So our final answer will be 0 and 4. Moving on, we've got 9x squared minus 4. Now this is another one where we only have two pieces. However, 9 times negative 4 is thir negative 36, and we can factor either using diamond method or in 6-2 we learn how to do difference of squares. Notice 9 is a perfect square, so is 4. And when we have perfect square minus perfect square, we are going to square root each one to find the number. Square root of 9x squared is 3x. Square root of 4 is 2. And then we do 1 plus and 1 minus of the pair. So 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2 equals 0. That's how we factor that. They've got to be the exact same but with the sign change in the middle in order for us to eliminate that middle number that we have, um, the middle value, the number of x. So setting each piece equal to 0, 3x minus 2 equals 0, 3x plus 2 equals 0. This one you cannot simply just switch the sign on the inside because that only works when we have 1x, and here we have 3x. So we basically solve each of these little equations, adding 2 to both sides on the left here. We get 3x equals 2, and then divide by 3, x equals 2 thirds. On the right, we've got 3x plus 2 equals 0. So at minusing 2 from both sides, we get 3x as negative 2, and x will also equal negative 2 thirds. And to squeeze it in, I just put x equals and wrote both answers there. Next, we've got a squared plus 10a plus 25. Again, this is three pieces. We are doing 1 times 25 equals 25. And then we know that the numbers that multiply to equal 25 need to add to equal 10. Now, the two factors of 25 are are 5 and 5. Um, so 5 plus 5 is 10, and since they're the same number, we're going to have two parentheses with a plus 5 in it. Since they're the same, we're just going to solve for one of them, and that will get us both answers, right? We just happen to have the same answer twice. a plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 from each side. a equals minus 5 is our single answer for that problem. Last example here is x squared equals negative 3x minus 2. Now looking at this, we are neither multiplying nor adding to equal 0. So in order to get us to be adding to equal 0, we're going to move everything over to the x squared side. Um, you want to have a positive x squared. So since it is positive over here, we're going to add 3x to each side. So then we'll have x squared plus 3x. And we're going to add 2 to each squared side. So the work looks like that, plus 3x to both sides, plus 2 to both sides. And we'll have x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And now we are ready for factoring. So we have 1 times 2 is 2, and we need to add to equal 3. That's why 3 is on the bottom. The only numbers that multiply to equal 2 are 2 and 1. Now that's your only set. So it's 2 plus 1 is 3. Works. And so we are going to split it up into x plus 2 times x plus 1. Set each piece equal to 0, which is going to flip the signs, and we're going to get x equals minus 2, and x equals minus 1, because it's 1x, we can do that, and those are our two answers. Lastly, here is the homework, 6, 8, page 292, 5 through 11, 14 through 19, 23 through 32, and 37. If you have any questions, ask your peers first, as I am not available, and when I get back, I will gladly answer your question.